welcome to episode two of the Made by Mumino podcast. My name is Catherine and you can find me on YouTube as Made by Mumino, Instagram as Mumino and on Ravelry as Mumino. So um, I'm recording today on Saturday the 2nd of March and um, yeah, it's the only opportunity I've got in the next few days to do any recording, but it is also a Saturday afternoon, which means there are other people uh, doing things on their day off, uh, quite understandably. So I live in a flat um, in the middle of the city, well, the outskirts of the city, and uh, there, are, there are families with uh, small kids in one or two of the other neighbouring flats in, in this building and the next door building. Um, and honestly, I don't really hear them running around in here. I quite like the sound of it. It's, uh, it's nice to hear life going on in, uh, in the building, um, but you do become acutely aware of these external noises when you're trying to record a podcast or something. So uh, yeah, I apologise in advance, but uh, I won't refer to it again. Mm. So, uh, oh, today's mug is a really beautiful mug that I picked up in, um, where was it, in the... Brecon Mountain Centre, I think. So my parents live in the uh, in the Welsh mountains, in the Brecon Beacons. And uh, there's a visitor centre there with a nice little gift shop that sells lots of local products and locally produced um, artisan wares and so on. And there's a, a potter that makes these really, really lovely little mugs. And they don't sell online. They don't have a website even. <laughs> they, they just they just make, make them in a small studio up near Brecon in Wales. I will try and find a website or, or some kind of reference to it and if I can I'll, I'll link it below but I did look before and I couldn't find anything so uh, so yeah that's today's mug and I'm drinking some what's it strawberry flavoured rooibos tea I think and it's very nice all of my teas are in little tea, tea caddy things most of them are labelled but some aren't so it's, it's a little bit of, uh, of uh, potluck as to which ones I get so yeah, um, as I said, my name's Catherine. Thank you so much for, if you left a comment on my first podcast episode, I'm so grateful. I'm genuinely like really surprised that people people watched it. So uh, so I thought I'd make another one. And so, so thank you so much for people who subscribed and commented and some lovely little chats and some questions and, and things. So, so yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Um, the main question I got asked was about this blanket. I didn't make this. I can't claim this. I'm so sorry. I wish I could. It's beautiful. My mum made it. Uh, so my mum, she sent me the pattern link and it was the A Day Out Blanket Cow by Sarah Hatton. And it's like a sampler with lots of different sort of colour work and, and so on. Uh, lots of different textured knitting. It's really, really lovely. Really, really nice. And she made it in uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Retreat. I'll link it down below. I did write the colours down. She made it in um, Pure, which I think is the, the, um, the cream colour. Ponder, which is like the dark tealy colour. And the last one was Harmony, which is this kind of grey blue, sort of dove grey blue colour. It's really... Um, really soft and it goes so nicely with with our living room scheme so uh my mum made it i think a couple of years ago um, and her friend knit one at the same time and uh, my my partner is a chilly mortal and uh <laughs> he, he it was in the process of being made and he he grabbed it to, to just kind of like have a little nap under and then he claimed it it was his so that became his christmas present i think that year so uh, so it now lives on the back of our sofa and gets pulled off when it's really cold because um, it's made with, like I said, Retreat, which is uh, the West Yorkshire Smiller uh, roving. So it's kind of a, a chunky weight yarn and it is very, very thick and warm and woolly. So mostly it just lives on the back of the sofa and, unless it gets really, really cold and then, then it comes down. One thing I will say about that yarn, whilst it's lovely and warm, it pills like nobody's business. And after I did the last podcast episode, I, uh, <laughs> I had a good look at it. I thought, oh, crumbs. So I got my little, little, um, little, um, what's it called? Fossil lasier, what's that in English? Uh, like depiller, depilling thing. Uh, and it, it made no difference whatsoever. So I uh, got some razor blades and uh, 
So my scissors are <laughs> to get rid of the worst of the fuzz. And it looks a lot better now. But I was, but yeah, it made me look at it a bit more closely. So, yeah, I've had a really busy couple of weeks. Um, the weather has been here and there. So trying to get outside every day and go for a little walk, but not always possible. So I've been doing quite a lot of knitting. Um, so let's just jump right in and have a look at some finished objects. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen this beast. This is the Sevilla shawl or Sevilla shawl by Ellis Knitwear, so MJ of Ellis Knitwear. And it is an absolute delight. I am very, very, very happy with this finished article. So it is made with about 330 grams of Neutrodon in the colorway Macadam. And it is as light as a feather. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I can really see me wearing this a lot. I don't travel so much anymore. I used to travel a lot, um, but this would be ideal on an airplane because it's so light and it's, I think it'll squish down nice and small, but it's when you need that little bit of an extra layer when, uh, when uh, the, it gets a bit chilly sometimes on, on flights. Apart from when you're sleeping, if you're long on, on a long haul flight and they, um, it seems to turn the cabin temperature up always like halfway through the flight. I don't know why they do that. Is it to try and make us sleep or something? I don't know. But anyway, but for when it's cold, this is perfect. So as you can see, it's a really simple pattern repeat, very effective. Um, it's a mock cable. And uh, as I said in my notes on Ravelry, it's just enough to keep you interested without kind of needing to not watch television or something. So it's it's kind of it's it's kind of engaging without being taxing, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. If you um check out my Instagram for some other other pictures and have a look at the hashtag uh Sevilla Shawl as well because it's uh, the the other task knitters have knitted some really gorgeous um options. I think one person's made it one in a, a, a pale dusty pink, another one in in a beautiful green and um yeah, really, really lovely. So get some inspiration if you fancy it. Um, I think MJ is releasing the pattern or is aiming to release the pattern end of next week, I think. So if you give her a follow on Instagram, I'm sure that uh, she'll have some kind of discount code or, or, or something when, when, it, when it goes live. So, uh, so yeah, I recommend this. One thing I thought, it's a really deep V, really, really deep V. So great for keeping your back warm when it's really cold. What I might try is making another version. Um, it's a paid for pattern, so I can't give too much information, but just increasing the um, uh, the increase rate up the sides to try and decrease the, the depth of the V to make a, a, a sort of a, a longer, narrower version, um, ending up with the same number of stitches at the end. So I might give that, that a go, because as I mentioned last week, or last time, sorry, I've got a lot of neutered about the place, so, uh, so yeah, I think it would put it to good use. So yeah, the Sevilla shawl from MJ Williams, oh, MJ, sorry, of Ellis Knitwear. Williams? Wilms, I think her name is, sorry. But yeah, really gorgeous. Thank you so much for letting me test knit that, MJ, if you watch this. Okay, so that was the first one and it was a monster. I think I ended up doing it in uh, about three weeks, but yeah there was a there was it was a a lot of knitting time spent on that but i did enjoy it it was it was a nice process nice process knit so the second finished object i showed you some yarn last time from homespun house so i got the in the bleak midwinter box of huga from homespun house and in there there was some lovely yarn and some candles candle stand um, some hand balm all sort of really really nice little treats um, so I decided to cast on some socks. I finished these yesterday. They are the uh, Njord DK socks from Nancy Wheeler of Knit Sip Happy. And I have used the colours from Homespun House. They didn't have a, a colour name or a, a breakdown of the, the, the fibre content or anything um, on the label. Um, but they feel like the soft sock DK base. Um, 
and there's two colours. There's a really low contrast toe and heel in there. And as you can see, Nancy's pattern's got a really cute little cable detail going down the front. And also a little, little row uh, going down the back as well, just for a bit of interest. But these knit up really, really quickly. Um, I think I finished them in about three days. Yeah, maybe maybe two days. I think I cast them on the day before yesterday. The DK socks are really fast though. Um, I um, Yeah, I really enjoyed making these though. So this is the size medium of Nancy's pattern. And um, I just followed the pattern exactly. Did the um, heel flap and gusset as she said in the pattern. I did the rounded toe as she said in the pattern because to be honest, that's what I always do on my socks. I find that it fits my foot quite well. I have quite a high end step. Um, and that works really nicely for me. Honestly, I don't normally knit textured socks because I find it's a problem wearing them inside shoes. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so I live in Dr. Martens and uh, my Dr. Martens are, were, yeah, mostly but with, uh, with tights or thin socks. So these, I think, will be around the house socks. But Nancy is running a, a cowl at the moment. Um, I'll put the hashtag down in the comment, in the comments. In the description so if you want to knit a pair of socks preferably i think using one of her patterns but i think any pair of socks is absolutely fine um yeah join in on that so yeah that's those really nice okay so um last time i also mentioned um a hat and mitten set or a hand warmer set that i was making um, and I finished the second hand warmer, so I, so I claimed it as a finished object in, the, in my first episode. Um, but it wasn't really finished. It was kind of two thirds of a finished object. But I finished finished the um, both mittens, mitts now. So if I just put those on quickly. I love these so much. But they don't really go with what I'm wearing. But that's okay. So, yeah. These are the uh, Lindsay Fowler um, Salt and Timber Windbound Mitts. And you can also fold down this little flap here as well if you want to. Uh, and I made these in a really uh, small producer yarn uh, called Holland Creative. It's just a DK Highland Peruvian wool. She sells it in a limited selection of colors, but it's very affordable, really good price point. I think it was like eight euros or something for 100 grams so it was it's, a, it's quite an affordable yarn i'll link her shop down in the details below and uh yeah it's a really nice plump um plump yarn that will be nice and warm and cozy i think so uh so yeah hopefully those will be nice and warm and there's the hat that i made to go with it again this is from the uh lindsay fowler salt and timber book and these were the which pattern was it i can't remember what the pattern was i'll put it down here so i think it was the firewood cap i think that's what it was called but they don't, it's it's not a matching pattern because this is a cable and this has got a textured detail around it but the yarn makes it matching it's matching it's fine but i wanted to make a matching set because bubbles and berries um and the woolly worker are doing a uh, knit along for knitted sets and i thought well, i need one anyway so i might as well join in and do. I love doing knit alongs. It really pushes me to um, make something. <laughs> like right now I'm in a, in a bit of limbo as like what I want to make next. Um, normally I gravitate towards jumpers and sweaters, but um, as you'll see in my knitting plans, that's not really happening this month for some reason. So, um, so yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, but I'll talk about that a bit more shortly. So, so yeah, that's my finished object. And one of them is a giant finished object. So I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy that it's done. And uh, really, ha uh, really happy, 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 happy with the, uh, with the finished outcome as well. So uh, my partner and I went out for uh, breakfast yesterday morning and it was a little bit windy and just had it wrapped around me and it was absolutely perfect, exactly what I needed. So um, yeah, can't recommend Newton enough. And that pattern was lovely too. So, works in progress. Um, no, not that one. Oh, this project bag 
my mum made it. She's so clever. So she, when she asks me what I want for Christmas or my birthday, or whatever, I always say, um, "Can I have a budget bag, or can you make me? Can you make me a little little flap quilt or, or a nice nice quilt or something?" She's a quilter as well. Um, she used to sell them, and she does really gorgeous things. I think this fabric is Tilda fabric. Um, really nicely lined and everything as well. She makes me these lovely, lovely bags. There's another one here that she's made, a little matching one for socks. How cute is that? So she puts a little label in my Welsh quilt maker. They're so clever. But this one here, this is my favourite bag because this one fits beginnings of projects of all kinds. I always put my badges on this one. So this is one I picked up in Stephen and Penelope. And that one there with the puffin on it, I don't know if you can see that. It says, I blooming love knitting. My dad found that in a little gift shop in Abergavenny in Wales. <laughs> he was so pleased with himself. He's like, I found this, it's got a puffin on it. Because he knows I love puffins. And it's knitting, it's like the perfect, the perfect badge. So yeah. <laughs> and of course my little Welsh flag as well. Oh, and yesterday was St. David's Day. So if you're, well, sure you celebrate St. David's Day. Uh, happy St. David's Day for yesterday. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I was talking about, uh, what was I talking about? Whips. So whips, I have got a couple of whips on the go at the moment. In fact, let's grab the little sock bag. I'm working on a pair of vanilla socks at the moment. And I'm trying these Addy Trio, um, needles because I've got a few little trips coming up and I don't want to risk my chagus being confiscated in uh, airport security. I know that a lot of people say they don't have any problems traveling um, on airlines and, and so on but if you travel on Eurowings within Europe it can be a bit of a problem. They are they do have quite a strict policy about um, any knitting implements of any kind so I'm hoping that these will be okay because they're bamboo and they don't have metal tips so and I'm getting on okay with them normally I knit my socks on a nine inch circular and uh, I do prefer that if I'm honest but, uh, but but yeah this is okay also I can see it being a benefit because you don't need to switch to DPNs to do the toe because um, there's the, the um, stitches are divided between the two sides of the sock so uh, so yeah Anyway, I'm making these in Yabol, which I think I talked about in the last episode as well. It comes in these little sausages and I'm not sure what the, the colours, I don't think the colours have names, um, but I'll put the, the colours that I'm using down below. Um, yeah, the, the colour is like 83.0209, which yeah, doesn't mean anything, but it feels really nice and it knits up really nicely. But I had a bit of a surprise with, with this yarn. Um, so as you may remember, I bought some, or well my, my partner chose some, to make a botanic shawl um, as, the, uh, as the main colour. And um, I, was, I thought I'd cake it all up into one, one big cake to make it easier to use. And as I was doing it, I, I let my um, yarn bounce around in a, in a basket whilst I'm caking it up when it's already in a, in a, in a cake like that. And this little cotton reel appeared. <laughs> and I, I often throw, like if I'm doing a bit of mending or something like that, I'll, I'll, I'll be really lazy if I can't be bothered to get my, um, my sewing box back down to put my bits and pieces away afterwards. And I'll throw my cotton reels <laughs> into, into my work basket. So there are often occasionally cotton reels bouncing around anyway. But, um, but yes, I saw, I saw this in there. I thought, oh, I should put that away. And then I added the second um, uh, skein to the, to the cake and another one appeared. Huh? What is it? So I Googled it and it's, it's, re it's a little five gram uh, reel of reinforcement yarn that they put in there for um, if you want to have extra reinforcement in your toes and heels. And it's always in the same color as the yarn that comes in. And now that I know that it's there, I can feel it. I can feel it inside. There's a hard lump in there. How cool is that? So I'm going to tuck that away and use that for, um, for darning them if they, they need fixing in the future or whatever. 
I thought that was really cool. Really, um, really nifty little idea. Also, <laughs> I, I'm a bit of an idiot because when I looked, when, when I looked then at the label, it very clearly shows on the, on the label there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, very clearly shows on the label what, that it's there. Well, there we go. Shows, shows you, if you don't read things, then you can you get surprises. Then that time it was a nice surprise. So happy days. So on to my next whip then, which as I said, is with this uh, Yavol, oh, and which the composition of which is 75% virgin wool, so it could be anything, and 25% polyamide. Um, it's a reasonably good price point, and uh, it's it's really, it seems to be, have really good reviews to be really very hard wearing, and, and um, it's, it's nice and easy to get hold of as well. One or two people messaged me on uh, in the comments, um, after the last episode to say that they just moved to Germany as well and they were they were reasonably new here. So what I thought I would do when I'm using a big box yarn, I'll put a link next to it of an online retailer that sells um, that kind of yarn or that exact yarn in Germany because it will drastically reduce your shipping con uh, costs if you can order from within Germany if you're living here. So um, yeah, that one there is really readily available. So in the UK, um, you have many yarn stores or yarn shops that are affiliated to Rowan. And here in Germany, our equivalent would be uh, Lana Grossa or occasionally Lang Yarns as well. So that kind of yarn, that Lang Yarn, from, or the Yavol Lang Yarn is really easy to get hold of. Most, um, most knitting shops, most yarn shops will, will carry that kind of yarn. So um, yeah, really, really read readily available. So anyway, as I was saying, my partner chose some yarn for a botanic shawl and I've caked it up. Ooh. So this is the Sheep Years Barber Pole uh, Gradient Wool. And this is more of that Yobol um, that I'm holding then as the main color with this. And the sheep years, I think it's a 7525. Let me just check. No, 7030 merino superwash and polyamide. Um, yeah, and it's quite a skinny fall ply, if I'm honest. So I hope that it blooms a little bit when it's blocked, because otherwise I'm worried it's going to be a bit of a skinny shawl. But yeah, I've made some nice progress on it. Just rearranged myself. So yeah. This is it so far. You can see, you can already see that gradient coming out really nicely. So the pattern is a paid for pattern. I'll link it below from uh, West Knits, from Stephen West. And it's really simple. You start off with a little I-cord tab. I'm not giving anything away because there's free tutorials on YouTube uh, from Stephen West for, for making this shawl. And then you just, with mosaic knitting, start doing these repeats. Happy days. And it's, again, really potato chippy. You just can not switch off from it. It's just engaging enough to be like, oh, I'm knitting something or what, com what comes next. And also the, the, um, the, the color changing yarn helps with that as well. But it's not sort of, Shh, I'm counting time knitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when my partner asked me, am I, am I counting? I just count louder. Yeah, I'm sure everyone does that. <laughs> but that, uh, that project, I'm, I'm really happy with it. That will progress nicely. He's asked if he can have it by the time we go to, uh, he goes on his next business trip, which is in May. So hopefully I should finish it by then. But he's, he's pretty easy going if I don't. That is held in one of my Eldenwood craft bags. I love these bags. Um, so Emma at Eldenwood Craft, you must have seen these. They're all, ev everyone's got them. They're all over the internet. And um, they're really, really nice shape. Nice and deep, flat bottomed, couple of pockets. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, and also, because I'm totally paranoid about um, moths, having grown up in an old house, I keep these little sachets from Dylan Camille in, uh, no, don't usually keep them in my project bags. I'm not sure why that one's in there, but I keep them in my yarn stash. Um, 
but uh, but yeah, this one is fig and rose flavour. This is a, a, a Dutch company, which is kind of, I suppose, uh, homewares. It's a, if you know Muji, the Japanese homewares company, it's a bit like that, but Dutch, and they sell lots of sustainable uh, products. It's really, really nice. I'm not sure if there's any shops in the UK, but they're definitely all over Europe. So I'll link it below. So these are really, really, really handy and they're not too expensive and they keep their scent for quite a long time. So, uh, so yeah, so that's my botanic shawl, and my Aldenwood craft, um, Aldenwood project bag. So yeah, um, what else am I doing at the moment? Future knitting plans. Um, firstly, I, I don't really knit shawls, but for some reason I have an urge to knit shawls at the moment. Uh, last year when I was in Amsterdam, I went to Stephen and Penelope's Westnet um, um, yarn, yarn shop and I picked up three skeins of this Bird Street yarn. How gorgeous is that? It's, I felt that it was kind of neutral and then you get these little pops of colour as well. So I felt that, yeah, they would go really nicely with this outfit talked about what I'm wearing. I'll do that in a second. I'll just finish talking about this first. So yeah, this is Bird Street Yarn, a uh, dyer based in Bristol, husband and wife, who um, I think they go to lots of the yarn shows in, in the UK. So if you're in the UK, keep an eye out for them because they make really, really delightful yarn. So um, yeah, based in Bristol. And I think this might be a special base that they make just for Stephen and Penelope. This is the just their BFL 7525. It might be a base they normally have. Um, have a look on their website. But if you're in Europe, uh, they do deliver to Europe as well. Um, so check them out. But it's absolutely gorgeous. Really love this. This colorway is called Merlin, type of uh, bird, of bird of prey. And I was thinking I would like to cast a shawl on with this for myself. Um, so every I tend to go to Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam once a year uh, and I then wear what I bought the previous or the yarn I bought the previous year. So last year it was my botanic shawl that I made for myself and this year I planned on making the um, dotted rays shawl. Whoop. So I'll put a picture up here. Um, yeah, the dotted rays shawl. So I've seen people making it in beautiful rainbow stripes and things, but I thought it'd be really nice as a nice neutral spring weight shawl to wear instead of a coat, maybe. Uh, so I might cast that on for myself, I think. But this yarn has been sitting here since last May and I keep thinking about it, but then there's always other things to do. So the run up to Christmas, I do lots of gift knitting. Uh, run up to birthdays, I, I knit socks for people and things. So um accessories for myself tend to take a bit of a back seat so I, I think I might might give this one a go because this can sit quietly and be a long-term project I think so yeah so yeah there's that so watch this face make me accountable ask me about my shawl <laughs> but yeah I'd love some inspiration as well so if anyone else is knitting um any projects at the moment uh, particularly thinking about four ply two to three skein weight shawls um, or new sweater designs things like that so I'm looking for a bit of inspiration like I said normally I'm a sweater knitter I love knitting jumpers and big garments uh, like this one haha -ha! there we go let's talk about what I'm wearing this is the town sweater from Ozetta I think that's two episodes in a row where I've been wearing an Ozetta garment but yeah, this is the town sweater. I modified it a little bit. I'm not going to stand up because I'm just wearing really skanky leggings. <laughs> I'll put a picture of myself wearing it up here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I modified it a bit. I made the, the neck a bit longer so I could fold it over. I made it a bit longer so I could wear it over leggings. Um, she's got a, another um, sweater pattern out recently. She's just released one. I think it's called the Constellation Sweater and it looks perfect. It's got a split hem, and I think if I knit that a bit longer as well, I think that would fit the bill for wearing it with leggings. So um, 
yeah i might i might have a look at that but yeah if anyone has any ideas for any other sweaters uh that would be great so yeah this is made in raubirk um they are a natural dyeing company spinning company oh it's pilled a little bit based in bavaria i think they have a bricks and mortar shop in uh, munich and i'm pretty sure they go to lots of the yarn festivals like um what's the big one rheinbeck i'm pretty sure they were in rheinbeck this year um but they have a range of bases but the four main bases are made from local uh, locally sourced yarn and they're in three four different colorways ranging from light creamy oatmeal through to quite a dark brownie gray and then they dye their natural dyes um, over each of those bases so you end up with a really nice range of different colors this one is called Cornwall Heide which I think Heide means heather in uh, in German uh, so this was this and this was over their darkest base which i think is called obsidian but i'll link it down below and i had this i had a sweater quantity of this for my birthday a few years ago and it is lovely it has pilled a little bit but i haven't depilled this and i wear it a lot and i wear it under jumpers a lot uh, under jumpers under coats a lot so it's not surprising if it gets a little bit pilled under the arms and so on but um yeah, this, this wool, it looks like a DK weight, but I treated it like a worsted because it blooms a lot when you are, uh, when you're blocking it. And it also grows a little bit when you're blocking it as well. So just be aware of that if you're using it. But they are a really, really nice company and they have lovely sustainable plant bases and, uh, sorry, plant dyes on, on local bases. So yeah, I really recommend them. Okay, what was I talking about? So, Bird Street Yarn done. What else am I doing? Ah, oh, so I heard last week that um, I've been picked as one of the test netters for the, so John Arben, which is a, um, a, a traditional mill in the Southwest of the UK, in the Southwest of England. They uh, produce an annual with patterns and, and, and uh, articles and so on in it. And in each of their annuals, are, I think there's like eight patterns in each one. Um, and they, they they were looking for testers. So um, I applied and got picked to do the Marie Wallen cowl. Um, there's no pattern yet. They're just a schematic and a picture. So I'll put the, the, the schematic, the, the uh, picture from the schematic up here, um, which was absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited because I haven't knit a Marie Wallen uh, pattern before. I've got her books, or uh, one of her books, and I have really, really <laughs> strong intentions to make one at some point. Um, but it's just very intimidating with all of the uh, all of the the, the the yarn and the colours going on and everything. And um, I, I'm I'm not not confident with choosing colours, but when it comes to, to picking twelve colours, thirteen, fourteen colours for for one project, that's that's quite daunting to make sure that that all works. So I have stuck to the recommended palette that John Arben have um, have supplied, very kindly supplied for the um, for the cowl. And I'm uh, so <laughs> I was able to go and order some yarn last week, which uh, which is on its way at the moment. Normally, I, I try and buy yarn locally if possible, local yarn shops or at least local online suppliers. Um, but I had to make an exception for this. So I, <laughs> I spent a really nice hour going through all of the recommended colours and being very strict with myself as to what I already had in my stash and I really didn't need to buy again or what was very similar in my stash. So I already have a little bit of John Arben four ply in stash, which is what's recommended. Um, the recommended palette uses Harvest Hues and or Marie Wallen's own British Breeds um, uh, yarn. So, um, but they said any of the uh, four ply woolly wools can be substituted for those, which like I said, I do already have some of that in stash. So here's two that I have. Most of them are already open and caked up because I do use them. This is the Exmoor sock. And as you can see, it's just a nice, rustic 
slightly heathered sock yarn. It doesn't feel like the softest until you start to wear it and then it gets really soft. It felts a little bit and it just makes gorgeous socks. I use this stuff for heels and toes um, in most of the socks that I make for myself and uh, I'm, I'm always happy with the outcome, never disappointed. Um, this, the Exmoor sock, comes in 50 gram skeins and it's all sourced locally and it's 60% Exmoor Blueface, 20% Corridale, 10% Sparkles, but how do you say that? Sparkles, 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 and 10% Nylon. <laughs> it is super wash, um, but, uh, but it just, it's just lovely yarn. So thankfully I have quite a few of these in, in, in my stash already. So I was able to, to substitute some of the colours. One or two I was able to substitute with um, Woolly Knit because I have that in quite a few different colours. And their four ply British cones are very similar in weight to this. Um, and I've used them together before in other colour work projects, so I know that it works. Um, it's also really similar to Holst Super Soft, that kind of weight, if you're, if you're aware of that. And luckily, I, was make, I made a jumper last year for my partner using Cossack and Tundra, which is the two dark green colourways in Holst, which is uh, really close to one of the colours that's needed for the cowl as well. So, um, so yeah, yarny goodness arriving next week. But I can totally justify it because I didn't spend as much as I could have done because I also shopped from my stash as well. So therefore, anything I spent is saving money. Yes, I, I think that works. So, so yeah, I'm knitting a lot of things to go. Oh, just notice the light's going crazy. Oh, it's quite late in the afternoon, so the sun is over there. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. Just noticed the light levels are a bit weird. But yeah, I'm knitting lots of things to go around mine my neck and the necks of others i don't really knit shawls very often the only shawls i've knitted in the past other than one or two for myself are as gifts um my mother-in-law <laughs> who is baffled absolutely baffled by my love of knitting <laughs> she is greek she's in her 70s and when she was a little girl she had to spin and weave and knit in order to provide clothes for her family um, before moving to Germany with nothing um, as a Gastarbeiter. So during the, I think it was during the 60s and 70s, lots of guest workers came over from Turkey, Italy and um, Greece to work in the factories here. And uh, they were set up and helped out and uh, um, my, my mother-in-law was one of them. And yeah, so she, when she was a little girl, had to knit and spin and weave um, or they wouldn't have clothes. So she is absolutely baffled by me choosing to do this as a hobby, <laughs> which is completely understandable. It is, it is somewhat baffling, um, especially when I tell her how much some of the yarn costs. She's just what, like, I'll bring you back yarn from Greece. I'll, I'll bring you back some some sheep yarn, some some fleeces from Greece. So maybe I should take her up on that. But anyway, <laughs> but I knit her. I've knit her a few things. But last Christmas I made her um, uh, a woolenberry shawl. I can't put a picture in. I'm afraid of the of the knitted the finished article because I forgot to take a picture before I gifted it to her. Um, but I knit it in a, she asked for something in bright red, so I, I, I knit her a bright red shawl uh, using some West Knit um, tandem. And she was thrilled with it, still baffled, but but really thrilled with it, bless her. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, so I'm knitting a lot of shawls at the moment, a lot of uh, scarfy, cowly things. And uh, I'm looking for some inspiration for my next knitted um, jumper. My brother requested a jumper last Christmas. He saw the puntle uh, that I've made for my partner. I'll put a picture up here. The puntle is my favourite go-to pattern for knitting a basic jumper. I love that pattern. And it's super beginner friendly. It's the first um, knitted in the round jumper I ever made. It tells you exactly where to put your stitch markers, as all patterns do, but it colour codes them. Then it refers to those colours all the way through the pattern. And it's it's got really clear schematics, really clear measurements, and it's it's just 
it's just very friendly isn't, and with lots of tutorials and things um, so if you're looking for a beginner friendly um, sweater pattern I really do recommend that one but anyway I usually knit one for my partner every Christmas or something similar to that and my one of my brothers saw it and he's like oh, oh that's nice yeah that's nice and he's very knit worthy he lives on a canal boat with his partner and uh, he loves having nice warm rustic clothing that will last him a long time and uh, so for him and his partner I made them a cowl and a hat and stuff last Christmas and which they which they loved um so uh so yeah uh so I'll probably cast on that at some point for him but he doesn't need it till Christmas so I'm trying to think of something a bit more interesting so if anyone's got anything on the needles at the moment that uh for a bit of inspiration I'd love to hear about it um but yeah that's about it for today before I finish I will very, very, very quickly uh, mention potentially the elephant in the room of my drop spindle. I will be honest, I haven't touched it. I've moved it from one bag to another. Um, I put my little bumps of fibre in a Ziploc bag and that's as far as I've got. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's absolutely terrifying. I don't know what I'm so scared of because even if I get it wrong or mess it up or whatever, I can just use the yarn with the, the, the fibre for something else like felting or, uh, you know, make little balls out of it and sew them together. I don't know what I'm so afraid of. I need to get on with it um, and give it a go. <laughs> so I'll try and do that before the next the next um, the next episode. But um, yeah, the next episode will be hopefully with lots of footage of yarn shops in um in Scandinavia so um so yeah I'm really looking forward to that I'm just starting to plan out my route but if anybody has any suggestions of where I could go good yarn shops and and spots to for knitting folk in uh, in in Copenhagen Stockholm and Oslo if anybody has any ideas I'd love to hear about them um we've only got a very short time in each city so um uh yeah, that's why I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. I had to phone a company in Denmark the other day uh, to book a, to, 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 to get some information for, for our visit. And I, I was so apologetic. I was like, hi, do you mind if I speak English? And their response was just like, of course, indubitably. Unfortunately, my uh, English isn't up to par, but I will do my best to satisfy your needs of this perfect English. Oh, it's so, oh dear. It just makes me feel so so uh, self-conscious of, uh, yeah, not speaking many other languages very well. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So, um, yeah, next episode will hopefully be in a couple of weeks. Um, I initially said I'd do this every three to four weeks, but I'm, I kind of really enjoyed making the last one. So I'll, um, I'll probably do it every two to three weeks just to see how it goes. But yeah, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, uh, I forgot to ask last time if you could like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Um, you don't have to. I'm, I just enjoyed, genuinely just enjoy doing this and having a nice little chat for 45 minutes or so. So, um, but yeah, if you have any comments, questions, uh, any ideas for things I should knit, any ideas for places I should go in Scandinavia, I'd love to hear about it. Um, and yeah, happy knitting and I'll hopefully see you in a couple of weeks. Bye! Bye.